Nine Menseas guard the shores of Tenerife Island. These statues represent the most famous rulers of the Nine Kingdoms of the Guanches, a reddish, brown-skinned, blue-eyed, blonde people that ruled these lands before the Spaniards invaded the Canary Islands at the turn of the 15th century. Some specialists deem the Guanches to be related to the Berbers of neighboring Morocco, and thus descendants of the Aryans, while others believe they are related to the Celts of Western Europe. There are also some who suggest that they may be descendants of the fabled Atlanteans, and that the Canary Islands are what is left of the sunken continent. What we know is that the Guanches mummified their dead a strange mode of disposing of the bodies of those who passed from life, a mode shared with the Egyptians, the Mayans, and the Polynesians. There are many unanswered questions about the Guanches, but perhaps the most intriguing ones are related to their ancient constructions strikingly similar to those found in the Mediterranean island of Sicily and the African island of Mauritius, the pyramids of Guimar. They might not be as tall as uh, the pyramids in uh, Egypt or other pyramids around the world, but definitely this is an impressive construction. The rocks might not be fashioned uh, in a very sophisticated way. Uh, they might not have fine details on them, but uh, the construction it itself is, is impressive. The amount of effort, the amount of uh, understanding of architectural principles and uh, the way this was aligned with the solstice shows the builders had a history. It's not something that somebody just uh, came up with and tried to do on a whim, but it's something that has been planned, something that has been uh, designed with a purpose and based on uh, knowledge that pre-existed knowledge that probably the Guanchos brought here with them whenever they first colonized these islands. Norwegian anthropologist and explorer Thor Heyerdahl spent seven years in Tenerife digging up the pyramids at Guimar. He convinced another Norwegian, businessman Fred Olsen, to buy the land and finance the archaeological dig. Herdal's arguments against local theories that these were just piles of debris built by farmers to clean up their fields were solid. There were no agricultural fields in the surrounding area. The ground beneath the pyramid complex was leveled. The stones were not from the surrounding area, but processed solidified volcanic lava stones brought from other regions. More so, Herdal's theory that the complex was aligned with astronomical events was confirmed in 1991 when researchers from the Canary Institute of Astrophysics, Juan Antonio Belmonte Aviles, Antonio Aparicio Juan, and Cesar Esteban Lopez demonstrated how the longer sides of the terraces at Guimar were intricately placed in the position to mark the direction of winter and summer solstices. If one sits here along uh, the main axis of the pyramid complex, with a straight wall that forms the northern edge of the plaza. One can observe on the summer solstice, on the 21st of June, that uh, the wall is exactly aligned with a point behind the mountains where the sun sets. And there's a, a strange phenomenon that uh, occurs here. It's called the double sunset. The sun completely disappears, uh, and a few minutes later, a fraction of its solar disk reappears before setting again, and this gives the impression of two consecutive sunsets. Now this together with the astronomical orientation of another main axis to the sunrise during the winter solstice gives the complex a possible function as a macro calendar.
Thor Heyerdahl argued that the ancients were able to navigate the oceans. He organized various expeditions using vessels built with ancient techniques to prove his point, the most famous of them being documented in the movie Contiki. Heyerdahl and other explorers like him found pyramids everywhere. In the Maldives, located on an eastern maritime trading route that was used by various ancient civilizations, including the Phoenicians coming from the Middle East, on Gan, the Hawitas pyramid aligned to the sun. In the volcanic island of Mauritius, seven step pyramids virtually identical in construction technique with those in Tenerife aligned to the solstices. And the list continues with step pyramids in the islands of Sicily and the Pico of the Azores. These pyramids are built with volcanic rocks with no mortar. All share similar design and all are grouped in complexes. In Tenerife, the complex is uh, next to Guimar, the ancient location of the Mense, the king of Guimar. Now, if there is one pyramid template that can be applied to pyramids wherever they are found in the world, it is that pyramids, sun, moon and star worship and kingship seem to go hand in hand. When the Spanish came to the Canaries, they found the people without seafaring knowledge. But it is known that the Phoenicians were used by many ancient people, including the Egyptians, for expeditions around the world. The Phoenicians constructed astronomical temples that were perfectly aligned to the cardinal points and to solar phenomena. With the discovery of similar pyramid complexes on Tenerife, Sicily and Mauritius, it is clear that these are remnants of a seafaring culture that has carried people and left traces on islands on various sides of the African continent and across the oceans. Recent DNA analysis of the elongated skulls from Paracas in Peru by researchers like L.A. Marzulli and his team and Brian Forrester have shown a clear Middle Eastern connection. So it seems that Thor Heyerdahl's theory of migration of people from the Middle East across the oceans into South America is substantiated by the evidence. Other researchers like Steve Quayle and Timothy Alberino have pointed out to similarities in construction techniques between megalithic sites from the Middle East, Europe and Mediterranean islands and South America. The point of the short documentary is to connect the dots and follow the lines back to a common point in official history and in what some consider myth, but many others know to be a true record of the past. The pyramids of Guimar in Tenerife are part of a vast network of constructions built by peoples from the distant past who traveled across the world from a common location in the Middle East, building advanced towering pyramidal structures aligned with astronomical events in places near to the centers of kingship. All this by using a core of knowledge that came down with minor variations from one common past. Some stipulate Atlantis to be the source, however connecting the dots points to a different location, one mentioned in ancient documents that have more confirming copies of the text than any other archaic record, the Hebraic scriptures. Here is where we find a description of a humanity united under one language and one ruler building a tower in the plains of Shinar at a place called Babel, the gate of the gods. It has been said that the past is shrouded in mystery and until recent that was true. But the thick fog is starting to clear up and uh, with the advent of internet and technological development, more and more evidence has come forth supporting what once was thought to be an inaccurate record of the past. Recent scientific discoveries, archaeological finds and a deeper study of ancient texts have come together to bring forth the truth that was encoded in the prophetic scriptures of the Hebrews all along. Maybe it's time we all take a better look at what has been proven to be the most reliable source of truth. <laughs>